All right, what is up, YouTube? We are uh, back in the grow, and by popular demand from my Instagram mostly, uh, I wanted to cover how I made my uh, irrigation system. It's pretty DIY, uh, so I'll go over what I did. Everyone's situation is you know, a little bit different, but I'll give you a brief overview, maybe something you can kind of MacGyver together yourself as well. So you know, if you care about that, let's get into it. So as you can tell, I didn't run out the, the bottom, which is how you're supposed to do it. Normally you'll have your hose connected and then you'll have a pump. And then, you know, as the water pressure goes through, the pump, you know, pulls it out at whatever pressure you're doing, right? I didn't do that because this is in the front and I, I didn't really have room for that. So I did the way you're not supposed to do it. And I got a submersible pump. This is a one fifth horsepower because I don't have to go very far and not very many trays. So it was more than enough. Um, I'll link this in the video description. I got it on Amazon. Uh, it was like $48 or something. That's where I got all my pumps. Um, so I have a few pumps linked already. I'll link this one particular uh, since it's one, one fifth horsepower. Uh, all I did is, oh, it almost tipped over. All right, hold on. There we go. So it came with this little grommet right here, right? Which is just meant for a hose attachment, like a garden hose. So I, got a, I found a brass fitting that fits this that I could use to screw into the PVC. Because PVC didn't have, you know, the, the male thread, it only had the female side. So I got the brass fitting for hoses, obviously PVC thread, and that's just, you know, that was just so I can join it to PVC because I wanted a stiff, I didn't want to use this hosing that I have the whole way because it's not sturdy and I wanted something, you know, sturdy. So just PVC piece to, you know, to the height that I wanted because I wanted to be able to put this, uh, you know, I just used a T, there's a small piece of PVC in, just enough that I can close this because I had to make it fit right here so I can get it in now, right? So I didn't have much room to work with. Um, so that's why it looks like this. This may not be proper if you're a plumber, you might hate me right now, but you know, today's what it is. I'm just, you know, a grower, man. Don't sue me. So, you know, and obviously you can see another little piece here, a PVC that I cut, just enough to have these together so that way when I want to, I can close this off and I can open this one so that way I can mix my nutrients. So when I put in all my liquids, I can just let this run and mix everything. And that way, because obviously you can't reach down in there if it's low to test pH, I can just reach in with a cup, fill up, you know, fill up my little cup and then test my pH, my, you know, in my uh, EC values and all that from there. So easy peasy, right? Whenever I'm done, so when I'm not mixing, this is normally closed off so that this is open and it can run off my timer. So, you know, all I did was make this long enough that it would go out the edge and down just enough that I can attach my little filter. All this is at Home Depot, by the way. Same, basically the same configuration as down below. This brass fitting, screw onto there. And then this right here, on the end of that, I had to take it off to get it out, is this, which is just a screw on one end and the hose pushes in. This is a half inch uh, irrigation hose you get, you know, in the section at Home Depot. And it just shoves into there. Obviously it's flexible, it goes down and runs around. I'll show you over here. These are, I got on uh, Amazon as well, and uh, I've had them for a while. They were supposed to be for PVC to clip into, and I was gonna use it to hang drying nets, but I'm now using it to hold this, because I'm like, oh, well, it's half inch, so that way, when I want, I can just pop this out and move it whenever I wanna add things or I have to change things or whatever I need to, right? So that way, it's not so permanent. I'll link these in there as well. All this stuff's in Home Depot, so nothing to link. You just have to walk in there and MacGyver it out yourself. So, you know, I went around, I have a little T, I'll see if I can show you. There's a little T section right there. And there's another one down there, you can see the black tubing go up. Now, I did go longer, as you can tell here. It So there's where it tees, and then it goes and I capped it at the end. I didn't want it to just elbow right here, because then I wanted the water pressure to go to the end, so that way when the pressure initially goes in, it's gonna go straight usually first, instead of up against gravity, right? So that way, when the water pressure builds, it, it goes up both of these at the same time, opposed to hitting the end and then going up the elbow first, and then that one. So you know you wanna have a little extra, or if you have floor flex, they have the part that goes up and it spurts out the extra air. That's why they do that, so that way you have equal pressure on your lines, right? And then I made it extra long, right here, and I just strapped it so it wouldn't move around too much, because as you guys know, I pull my trays out and slide them. So I gave myself extra room, and I cut a little groove in the back right there, so it can do it. These, I didn't really know how long to cut, so I measured 30 inches, because I thought, you know, if this was moving around a bit, I needed it, but it's a little too long, and it just kind of makes it look a bit messy. 
um, but I don't want to take them all off to cut off three inches off every single one. So it is what it is. Maybe next run I'll, I'll you know I'll fix that you know reduce by three inches or something like that. But that's really it. You know these are just quarter inch tubing. I got the little grommet pieces. I got the little hand thing that clips, and then I just actually just like lick the tip of these and shove them in. So that way it lubes it. Gotta use some spit. Otherwise it's pretty difficult unless you buy the thing that shoves these little pieces right here in. This I messed up, so I actually put plumber's tape on it so when I, it would hold the seal real nice. So if you ever get these loose and it starts to leak here, if you can pull them out, rub, put plumber's tape on it, shove it back in. You know, mad little thickness, right? Yeah, it just goes up into these matrixes from floor. This is the only thing I didn't DIY. This is floor flex matrix. These are supposed to actually, like this edge, is supposed to sit on the edge of this, but I can only get the 13 and a half inch ones, and these uh, are 12 and a half to 13 it said, and this is 13, so I don't know what they're measuring on, but I think there's 15 inch ones that I didn't know about and I should have got them, but you know, you live and you learn. Uh, so it doesn't always reach to the exact edge, but I guess that's better than just a stake because here, you know, it's evenly distributed and that's what I wanted. So I'll have to get some bigger ones next time. These are pretty like flimsy plastic pieces that go in so that way when the hoses go in, it drops out the bottom and evenly distributes. I don't know if I like it. It really seems real flimsy. I thought this is my only time ever using Floriflex. So Floriflex, beef these up a bit, man. These things bend and twist and break where I had to literally use some zip ties because it started falling apart a lot. So floor flex, if you're listening, make these a little thicker. I know you're trying to cut costs, make these a little thicker. I mean, I'd rather spend $5 more or something to get something that's more sturdy. So otherwise it's, it's built like it's a one-time run. So if you're listening floor flex, do that, bro. Here you go. Here's customers telling you what you need, but that's really it. That's my whole uh, irrigation in a nutshell. Pretty simple. Now the way I'm running the timer, by the way, I guess I didn't cover is I have this going up right here plugs into this smart plug that I got on Amazon. Uh, I think it might already be linked in the description, but if not, I'll put it at the top. And I use my app in my phone and I just set timer for it to do a two minute spurt, uh, like 15 minutes after lights are on, you know, once it starts, you know, picking up transpiration. And then two minutes about halfway through, so that way I, you know, it's nice and wet for the second half of the lights and through the dry cycle. And then I'll adjust as I see fit. I really don't know that much about the irrigation yet. So in crop steering, uh, I do dry backs. Otherwise I just did big daily waterings. So and I, I still do my runoff. I try I'm using this little oil, this sensor, moisture sensor, but it's really difficult because it's on the very edge that doesn't get wet. So I doubt this is very accurate right now. But you know, it's a seven gallon pot. What can you expect? How can you tell from one section what it is? So as long as I'm getting some runoff after each one, then I know it's sufficient. As long as these aren't drooping, it's good. And then I'll just kind of use growers intuition in between until I get some, you know, better sensors. But that's it. I think I covered it all. If you have any further questions on that, feel free to let me know. A lot of it was just DIY, as you can tell. I got this tank, obviously, to do all this in because you don't, get, you can't get big tanks of this. Even though this is 45 gallons, be careful. Get a drum or something because these will start to bow. And yeah, it gets a little sketch. But if you have any questions on the setup, anything at all, let me know. More than happy to answer any questions. A lot of you guys hit me on my Instagram. That's cool as well. Feel free to do that if you're more comfortable. Just slide into DMs. Go ahead and slip a slide all the way in. But until then, I'll end it here. Peace out, YouTube. As always, guys, happy girl, man.